Okay, let's talk about imaginary numbers. And some of you might have this expression on your face, but don't fear. We're going to go ahead and just do a quick introduction to imaginary numbers. Nothing to be afraid of. And uh, maybe you're thinking, imaginary numbers? I even Right now I'm struggling with just real numbers. Now you're going to throw this uh, idea of something being imaginary, like some sort of ghost number or some sort of weird type thing. Well, it's a little weird, but we need imaginary numbers. And here I have an example of a situation where um, uh, we use imaginary numbers quite frequently. But I'm going to explain all this to you in a second. Of course, this is going to be an introduction to imaginary numbers. And if you are taking uh, any math course from the algebra level or beyond, you'll need to learn about imaginary numbers. So we're going to get to all that. Again, this is just going to be... Um, a quick introduction to the concept because there is a quite quite a bit more that we're not going to cover. But uh, anyways, before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over many years have constructed what I like to believe one of the most comprehensive online math programs out there. So I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. If you need to take a full math course uh, for very comprehensive math courses, or if you need help with the current your current math class and you like my instruction, uh, uh, my the style, the way I teach, then you'll find all my best, most comprehensive uh, work in my math help program. Also, uh, hopefully you're taking good notes of whatever you're doing right now in math. If you're not, you need to. Um, I have uh, done quite a few videos on note-taking and importance of it. You just absolutely have to have great notes. But if you've been struggling with note-taking, I offer math notes. I'm going to leave those in the description as well. So that would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, uh, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry for right now. That's what I'm offering. And maybe I'll do some additional notes in the future. So if you uh, need a great pair of comprehensive notes, you should have a pair, uh, your own pair. But if you're, you know don't have, then you need to get some good reference materials. You can find those in the description as well. All right, so with all that being said, let's talk about this concept of imaginary numbers, and we'll use this as a basic example. All right, so uh, before I go down to this example right here, let's just scroll up here and just talk about numbers in general. So um, the numbers that you're used to working with, all right, are these numbers, and this is what we learn um, in, you know, uh, elementary school, etc. So learn the concept of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So these are like integer values, right? And with these guys right here, we can make nice fractions. We could take 2 and 3. We could say, oh, that's 2 thirds. Or right here, that would be a nice decimal 2.5. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff we can do with these numbers. These are called the real numbers, okay? The real numbers, but I'm not done yet with the real numbers. So these here, these type of numbers here, are really one, two, three, four. If you look at your hand, right, you're like you should hopefully have <laughs> five fingers. Those are what we call the natural numbers, right? So you have the natural numbers, and then if we throw in zero, then we have the whole numbers. So different type of numbers in mathematics. Okay, then we have numbers that can be expressed as fractions, okay? Those are called rational numbers, fractions of integers, to be technical uh, about it. Then we have um, uh, the integers, okay? And that would include these negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. So we have all these numbers. We have rational numbers. Then we have things like uh, the uh, value of pi, okay? I've talked about that in previous videos if you've been following me. And pi lands here about 3.14, okay, or maybe the number square root of 2, which is like 1.41, etc., somewhere around there, if I remember uh, or recalling that correctly. Okay, but all these numbers here on here, now these numbers are called irrational numbers, okay? Then we have rational numbers, we have natural numbers, we have whole numbers, we have integers. But these, all these numbers put together, okay, we could find on a number line. Okay, and these are called the real number system. All right, so this is what you've been working with, um, you know, a little by little. Okay, you start off and you know, counting, you know, the counting numbers sometimes are called the natural numbers. You learn this as a little kid, and then you start, you know, as your uh, math education proceeds, we start using all these numbers right here. Okay, and we need these, but then there comes a point where you just 
grow up and you need some more numbers. So the real number system is amazing. Okay, it's right here, real numbers. But we have another number system that's even bigger than that number system. You're like, what are you talking about? Well, real numbers are actually a part of a larger set of numbers called the complex numbers. Okay, complex numbers. And this is where this concept of imaginary numbers comes in. Okay, so um, in particular um, uh, math problems, we need uh, a number system uh, that uh, it goes above and beyond what the real numbers can do for us, right? So I'm going to explain that now, okay? And uh, again, this is not one of these little crazy little side math topics that are like, yeah, this is like a trivial little thing. No, this is super important. Once you're at the level, again, at the algebra level or so, when you start learning about uh, imaginary complex uh, numbers, you'll need them from that point forward, okay? So this is, again, just a quick introduction to what they are. Okay, so let's take this equation right here. X squared equals negative 16, okay? Let's think about this, but let's do this one first. X squared equals a positive 16, okay? So what this is saying is some number squared or some number times itself, okay, is uh, positive 16, right? So just think of it like this. Some number times itself is a positive 16. So uh, what is that number? Probably most of you are saying, oh, that's 4. And you would be right. So positive 4 times positive 4 gets us to a uh, positive 16, right? So no problem. But is that the only uh, number such that you, when you multiply it by itself, okay, we know 4 here is a solution, but is that the, on, is that the only number? No, okay, negative 4 times negative 4, a negative times a negative, hopefully you know this by now, is a positive. So negative times negative is a positive, so it means negative 4 times negative 4 is also positive 16. So negative 4 is a solution uh, to this equation as well. So this equation has two solutions, okay? And not to go off on too many tangents, but uh, this is a quadratic equation, and this little 2 tells us that there's two solutions. So we go x squared is equal to positive 16. To solve that, I'll take the square root of both sides. And the square root of a positive, um, of a positive real number is always going to be a plus or minus of it. So we always write it like this, plus or minus 4. So x would be equal to plus or minus 4, meaning that there is a, p a positive version and a negative version to that answer. So there's two solutions okay so in algebra we have these kind of like laws and properties and basically says hey if you have an equation all right you'll you have to have uh for example a quadratic equation you must have there's there's going to be two solutions to a quadratic equation okay so here we found them for this, in this particular easy one it's four and negative four no problem okay so let's just keep that in mind and now let's take a look at this equation. x squared equal to negative 16. Okay, so here's an equation. And it is a quadratic equation. It's x squared, all right? And this little thing up here is telling me, hey, there must be two solutions, all right? So the problem is the same. What number times itself gets us to negative 16? What number times itself gets us to negative 16? Now, most students will be... Um, you know, they'll, they'll react quickly. They'll be like, oh, it's negative 4. It's negative 4 because there's a negative. It must be negative 4. No, it's not because it's negative 4 times negative 4. This gets us to a positive, uh, whoops, a positive 16, okay? Not negative 16. So I'm like, hmm, well, I don't know. Is there a number such that you multiply it by itself gets back to negative 16? No, it's impossible, right? Because the only way to get to negative 16, for example, would be that negative 4 times a positive 4 is negative 16. And these are obviously two different numbers. Or a 4 times a negative 4, saying that's a negative 16, but these are two different numbers. That's the same number. When I'm what it means to square something means to take a number and multiply it by itself. So 3 times 3 is 3 squared or 9, okay? Um, negative 4 squared is a positive 16. Okay, so you got to make sure you understand that. So looking at this, I'm like, well, there is no number 
such that when I multiply it by itself, I can get back to a negative 16 because I need two different numbers because the signs must be different to get back to negative 16. So I'm kind of stuck, right? I'm like, I don't know how to get to this answer, right? But in mathematics, we say, well, listen, uh, there is two solutions. There's two, two solutions to this equation. Just because you don't know, you know, the answer, it's because we are, um, you know, we're trying to find that answer here on the real numbers. We're trying to figure it out with these numbers here, okay? So we're like looking around, looking around in, in a set of real numbers, but like, uh, we're, we're going to have to go get some other numbers, other type of numbers. So we're going to have to go above and beyond these guys and get into these guys to find a solution. And that's the whole essence of imaginary numbers. Now, again, imaginary numbers are is uh, a part of a complex number, but I'm not going to get into that uh, here too heavy duty. Just want to uh, illustrate to you uh, with this basic example, why we need other type of numbers outside of the real number system. Okay, so this right here, x equals plus or minus 4i, is um, the solution. So now let's talk about this. The secret to imaginary numbers is this thing right here. Okay, i is equal to uh, the square root of negative 1. Okay, all right. So what we can do is... Um, is uh, basically take a number like this, right? X squared is equal to negative 16. And we're going to solve this equation, right? We're going to take this uh, situation. We're going to solve it just like if it was X squared equal to a positive 16, okay? We're going to do the same kind of technique. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, I'm going to run into a problem because I already see this. You know, I'm not going to be able to take the square root of a negative number. Now, if you have your calculator handy, okay, and you go into your calculator, even a scientific calculator, unless it's uh, more advanced, if you try to take the square root of negative 16, your calculator is going to do something crazy, right? It might start smoking or kind of like, you know, vibrating. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No harm is going to happen, but you're going to have something on your screen that's going to look like error or it's going to come up with some weird kind of uh, message, okay? Because your calculator is kind of generally operating in the real number system. Okay, now you can have more advanced uh, calculators that certainly can uh, will do complex imaginary um, uh, operations with them, but you got to know what you're doing with your calculator. But anyways, if you want to go ahead and just you know, uh, test that real quick. You can, but let's get back to this uh, problem. So I'm taking the square root of negative 16. I know I'm going to run into a problem, so I can um, use this imaginary component i equals the square root of negative one. So I'm going to rewrite this, this negative 16, as a positive 16 times a negative one. Because this positive 16 times negative one is negative 16, right? Now. With square roots, I can separate them like this. Okay, square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And if you didn't know that, now you know that. You're able to take a big square root and rip it apart like this. Okay, so these two, this is equal to this. Now, what's the advantage of doing that? Now I'm like, oh, now I got this 16. It's positive. Now I can do something with that, right? In, in real numbers, the square root of 16 is positive negative 4. But I'm left with this little kind of like, little thing hanging out here, the square root of negative one. Well, we're going to call that by definition, a little imaginary part. And it's a little tiny eye. It looks like that, or it looks like this. And we just put this as a little eye like that. Okay. All right. So this is plus or minus four I. Okay. And that's just being multiplied by the imaginary components. So X would be equal to plus or minus four I. And that is the solution. These, this is what we would call two imaginary solutions to this um, equation. And that is imaginary numbers in a nutshell. It's no more complicated than that. Of course, you know, you're know you gonna have to learn more things about imaginary and complex numbers and as your education goes along. But the first thing is this, you know, you know, we need more numbers than we think we do, okay? We, we use the real numbers, we still have to use these guys. But as you progress, again, in your mathematics education, you know, there's problems like we just did right there. Okay, we, you know, we're looking at a problem like this that, guess what? To solve that, I'm going to have to use more numbers that uh, than, than is available with the real number system. So um, 
everything is important in math. Okay, what you learn, you know, way back in the beginning, it, you know, you're you're on a track, right, from elementary school to middle school, high school, college, whatever the case is. It's just climbing a ladder, step by step by step, and everything is important. So hopefully this is not the case, and you're feeling better about that and you're like all right i get it it's not so bad and it's not that bad right everything just takes an explanation that's what math is all about okay so again you may or may not be studying imaginary numbers uh, at this point in your education um, but again if you are taking an algebra class they're right around the corner and this is just a quick introduction to them so when you see them you don't have to have any fear of them okay so hey if you like this video please consider smashing that like button um, also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I uh, uh, already have hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos on my channel, various level of mathematics that can help you out, and I'm posting stuff all the time. But of course, if you want my best full direct instruction, uh, follow the links uh, in the description, and uh, you'll get some resources there. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.